What if Sammy the Bull Gravano never snitched? Hey guys, so I just saw a comment that suggested this new What If series. So let me know if you enjoy this format, and let me know in the comments if you want to see more. Alright, let's get on with the video. Sammy the Bull Gravano, the notorious mafia underboss, was one of the most feared killers in American history. He violated the code of silence that all who go into the life of organized crime must follow. Do not talk to authorities. The mafia calls this code of silence omerta, and the penalty for breaking it is death. But what would the life of organized crime be like if Sammy Gravano did not snitch on John Gotti? Here's how it all started. A little bit of background. Sammy Gravano's early life was marked by minor shoplifting and thefts at neighborhood stores. He was first brought to the attention of the Mafia at the age of 10, when local gangsters watched him get into a fight with several older bullies who had stolen his bike. One of the gangsters remarked that Gravano had boldly challenged multiple larger kids and fought like a little bull, a nickname that he would keep for the rest of his life. Gravano was not a good student. Teachers labeled him a slow learner, and he was held back twice. Gravano later attributed this to severe dyslexia, which explains a lot of the rage from his early days and onward. For the next several decades, Sammy Gravano's life would continue to be fueled by violence. Sammy Gravano left school at the age of 16, having already spent much of his time with a local youth gang called the Rampers. After a two-year stint in the Army, due to being drafted into the Vietnam War, he returned to New York and soon officially joined up with the Mafia. He was first brought into this mob life by a Colombo family associate, who started him out on robbery jobs. But soon enough, he began moving up and solidifying his position as a successful young racketeer. Sammy the Bull quickly earned a reputation as both a good earner and a man who was prepared to brutally murder anyone that he was asked to. His first murder came in 1970, when he shot Colombo associate Joe Colucci, who, bosses had learned, had been secretly plotting to kill another Colombo associate without permission. Gravano later compared the murder to the well-known scene from The Godfather, in which rising mobster Michael Corleone commits his first killing. Despite quickly impressing the Gambinos, Gravano's loyalty was put to the test two years later, when the family decided to kill his brother-in-law, Nicholas Cabetta who had developed a serious drug problem and had reportedly insulted a superior's daughter in some fashion. The Mafia has a complicated relationship with drugs, but members are generally expected to avoid becoming dependent on them. Becoming a drug addict meant that the Mafia couldn't trust Scabetta to keep his mouth shut if arrested on drug charges. Gravano tried to protect his brother-in-law in a strange way by giving him a savage beating instead of murdering him. However, it didn't work and Gravano soon had to kill his brother-in-law. A single hand was all of Scabetta's body that was ever recovered. By the early 1980s, Sammy Gravano already had a strained relationship with family boss Paul Castellano. One particular incident at the Plaza Suite in 1982 only made things worse. Gravano had arranged to sell the club to Frank Fiala, a local drug dealer. But before the deal was even closed, he began knocking out the wall of Gravano's office to begin remodeling. An enraged Gravano confronted Fiala, who flashed an Uzi submachine gun and threatened to kill Gravano right there. Gravano then retreated outside the club, and when Fiala exited the building, one of Gravano's crew shot him in the head. Gravano managed to talk his way out of it, but he still called a meeting with his crew to make sure that they would help him kill Castellano if necessary. In 1985, John Gotti, a former mobster who didn't like Paul Castellano, arranged a meeting with Gravano. Gotti never liked Castellano as godfather of the Gambino family and had no one to stop him. After longtime Gambino underboss Aniello Della Croce died of natural causes in late 1985, there was no one left to stop Gotti. Gravano and Gotti, united by a common interest, arranged a hit on Castellano, which led to his promotion to the position of consigliere. Other families started coming after Gotti and Gravano for killing Castellano without permission. The biggest blow came when notorious Lucchese family member Anthony Gaspipe Casso, with the cooperation of other families, arranged the murder of longtime Gotti and Gravano ally Frank Ticico in April of 1986. Gotti's status as boss made him more of a target than ever for the authorities, and he was brought to trial several times on various charges, including assault and racketeering. But with bribes and simple intimidation of jurors, he managed to escape conviction time and time again, earning him the nickname the Teflon Don. 
John Gotti and Sammy Gravano were both arrested on racketeering charges in December of 1990, when the FBI raided the Ravenite Social Club in Little Italy. Gotti tried to pin many of the hits that he'd ordered on Gravano, claiming that Sammy the Bull was a mad dog who killed for his own benefit. Gravano agreed to testify against Gotti in exchange for a reduced sentence. In March 1992, Gravano testified against Gotti and others over the course of nine days on the witness stand, revealing tales of racketeering and murder, 19 of which he was said to be involved himself, and 10 of which he said Gotti was involved. With Gravano's testimony, the state was finally able to marshal enough evidence to convict the Teflon Don, along with nearly 40 other mobsters. In April of 1992, Gotti was sentenced to life in prison. Gravano, thanks to his cooperation, received just a five-year sentence and then entered the Witness Protection Program. Sammy Gravano left the Witness Protection Program because he didn't like the constraints that it imposed. But he became very generous with giving interviews to the press once out of the program. He even appeared in a nationally televised interview with Diane Sawyer in 1997 and proved to be quite bold and boastful. When asked if worried about whether this made him a target, Gravano replied that if he ran into any mob hitmen, they would be the ones going home in body bags. In Arizona, he partnered with a local gang known as the Devil Dogs, after his son had befriended the gang's leader, and soon they started a major ecstasy organization that grossed $500,000 a week. However, in February of 2000, Gravano and his family wife Deborah, daughter Karen, and son Gerard, as well as 47 other members of the drug ring, were arrested. Informants in his own drug ring and recorded conversations detailing drug profits with his wife and daughter eventually implicated him. In May of 2001, Gravano pled guilty to leading a massive illegal drug operation in Arizona and was sentenced to 20 years in prison, but was released early in 2017. Gravano is now free, living openly, giving interviews while producing his own podcast and hosting his own YouTube channel, where he discusses his time in the mob. When the Arizona Republic spoke with him just after his release, he remained seemingly fearless about the threat of death that was always looming over him due to the life that he once led and the way he left it. Now let's get to it. What would have happened to the Gambino family if Sammy Gravano didn't testify against John Gotti? Impact on the Gambino family if Gravano had opted not to testify against John Gotti, it is possible that Gotti would have remained the head of the Gambino crime family for a much longer period. Gravano's cooperation was critical in securing Gotti's conviction for many killings, including that of his former employer, Paul Castellano. Without Gravano's evidence, Gotti could have avoided serious legal consequences, allowing him to continue wielding power over organized crime in New York City. Gravano's decision to snitch was inspired by disputes within the Gambino family, particularly over his ambitions and harsh tactics. If he had remained faithful, it may have resulted in additional internal tensions, or perhaps violence within the family as competing factions competed for power. Gotti's leadership was characterized by a blend of charisma and ruthlessness. Therefore, without Gravano's treachery, Gotti may have faced fewer challenges from inside his ranks. Broader Implications for Organized Crime Gravano's cooperation is sometimes considered a key role in the collapse of organized crime in America. His willingness to testify against high-ranking mobsters was a departure from the Mafia's ideology, which had always rewarded silence. If Gravano hadn't snitched, the cultural norm could have lasted longer, potentially stabilizing organized crime families and delaying their fragmentation. The aftermath of Gravano's testimony sparked increased law enforcement actions against organized crime. If he had not cooperated, federal investigations into the Mafia may have taken longer to yield similar results. The precedent set by Gravano's collaboration encouraged other mobsters to consider becoming informants, speeding up a trend that has undermined organized crime networks across the country. Sammy Gravano could have lived a different life if he hadn't snitched on John Gotti. Personal Consequences for Gravano Remaining loyal to the Mafia may put Gravano at risk of punishment from both law authorities and other mobsters. His early acts had won him several enemies. Hence, remaining silent would have led to a violent death or serious penalties if he were viewed as a liability by his peers. 
Gravano would have most likely received a significant prison sentence for his various crimes, including multiple killings, if he had not cooperated. His decision to snitch permitted him to serve only five years in prison rather than a life sentence. If Sammy Gravano had not collaborated with the authorities, John Gandhi's leadership could have lasted longer. The Mafia organization would have been more stable in the near term, and Gravano himself could have faced additional risks. The ramifications would most likely go beyond personal punishment, affecting the entire landscape of organized crime in America. What would have happened to John Gandhi's trial if Sammy Gravano didn't give his testimony? Lack of insider testimony. Gravano provided critical insider knowledge on Gandhi's involvement in a variety of illegal acts, including racketeering, murder, and the notorious death of Gambino boss Paul Castellano. His testimony exposed not only his own involvement in these crimes, but also Gotti's direct role in arranging them. Without Gravano's first-hand testimony, prosecutors would have struggled to construct a compelling narrative connecting Gotti to these particular criminal activities, which was required for convictions on major offenses such as murder and racketeering. Gravano's status as a high-ranking member of the Gambino family gave the government's case more credence. His testimony was critical in undermining Gotti's reputation as the Teflon Don, famous for his past acquittals. Gravano's willingness to testify against someone of Gandhi's status represented a dramatic shift in mob culture and presented jurors with a strong argument about the realities of organized crime. Without his testimony, jurors may have been more inclined to trust Gandhi's defense and claims of innocence. John Gandhi's life would have ended a lot differently had Gravano not testified against him. Weaker evidence against Gotti. The prosecution's case against Gotti was mainly reliant on Gravano's direct evidence. Without his help, the government would have had to rely heavily on circumstantial evidence and wiretaps, which may not have been enough to persuade a jury of Gotti's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. The absence of Gravano's detailed confessions about specific murders would create gaps in the prosecution's case. Up until this point, Gotti had previously successfully defended himself against many charges, thanks to both jury sympathies and his captivating public image. If Gravano had not testified, it's possible that Gotti may have once again used these reasons to achieve an acquittal, or at least a hung jury, especially considering the high-profile nature of his past trials. What if Gravano didn't snitch? If Gravano had remained loyal to the Mafia, rather than working with government authorities, it's possible that Gotti would have continued to command the Gambino family without facing a significant legal consequence. This very likely would have allowed organized crime activities to continue unabated, further entrenching the Mafia's control in New York and elsewhere. Sammy Gravano's decision to cooperate with investigators helped establish a strong case against John Gotti. Without his insider testimony and comprehensive reports of illicit activity, the government's case would have been substantially weaker, potentially allowing Gotti to dodge prison and maintain his leadership position in organized crime. Gravano's decision to testify had repercussions throughout organized crime. Gravano's decision to testify had repercussions throughout organized crime. His collaboration prompted other mobsters to consider becoming informants in exchange for mercy. If Gravano had not snitched, this trend could have very easily been delayed or at least decreased possibly allowing structured criminal organizations to maintain a stronger front against any attacks from the law. While Gravano's collaboration most certainly led to increased scrutiny of organized crime, his disappearance would have most certainly resulted in slower-moving investigations. Without Gravano's insider knowledge of the Gambino family's operations and criminal activities, the FBI might not have been able to exert as much pressure on them. If Sammy Gravano had not snitched, the FBI's investigation into organized crime would have been impeded by a lack of insider knowledge, lengthy investigative efforts, and the Gambino family's potential continued criminal activity. The overall influence on organized crime could have been enormous, resulting in a more stable mafia structure in the short run, strengthened leadership and stability. Without Gravano's collaboration, John Gotti would have faced fewer legal hurdles and could have kept his position as Gambino family leader. Gotti's leadership style was characterized by a bold public presence and a willingness to take risks, but he also had a strong family backing. Gravano's loyalty would have helped him keep control, allowing for more unified decision-making and strategic planning within the organization. Gravano's evidence not only contributed to Gotti's conviction, 
but it also revealed divisions within the Gambino family. If Gravano had not been an informant, the internal power battles that erupted following Gotti's downfall could have been averted. The family could have maintained a more cohesive front, lowering the probability of conflicts among factions, which frequently weaken organized crime groups. Continued criminal operations. The Gambino family was heavily involved in a variety of illegal operations, including racketeering, loan sharking, extortion, and drug trafficking. With Gravano's silence, these operations would most likely have continued uninterrupted. Gravano was crucial in managing the family's substantial commercial holdings, particularly those in the construction and waste management. His absence as an informant would indicate that these lucrative businesses remained intact and profitable. Gravano's assistance with law enforcement changed the way that organized crime was pursued. Without his insider knowledge, federal investigations into the Gambino family would have been less successful. The FBI relied largely on Gravano's testimony to establish their case against Gotti and other high-ranking family members. Without this essential information, law enforcement may have failed to penetrate the family's operations or assemble sufficient evidence for effective conviction, maintaining influence in organized crime. Gravano's decision to testify was a huge breach of the Mafia's vow of silence, which is called Omerta. If he had remained faithful, his actions could have reinforced traditional Mafia ideals among members, deterring others from cooperating with the police. This dedication to Omerta would assist in maintaining the family's influence and authority within the world of organized crime. Under Gotti's leadership, the Gambino family had the opportunity to form relationships with other criminal organizations and expanded their operations. With Gravano on Gandhi's side, they could have proceeded to solidify their control and influence across multiple criminal organizations without fear of treachery or exposure from within their ranks.